So uh, section 1.6 is uh, an application section. It's, if I'm remembering correctly, it's an economic model. It's kind of interesting. Um, we'll see at the end of the semester if there is time to go back to it. But um, for now, just to make sure we get all the sort of the pure math, covered, we'll skip it. So section 1.7 is a very direct sequel to section 1.5, even though it probably doesn't look that way when you first state um, what it's about. So let's try to build to this. We talked about homogeneous systems. But we've also said that systems and vector equations and matrix equations are really kind of the same thing. I mean, if you have a homogeneous system of linear equations, you could rewrite that as a matrix vector equation where you have the zero vector, the vector of all zeros on the right-hand side. Or you could write it as a vector equation. And the definition of this section, and this is a critically important definition. We'll be using it throughout the rest of the semester. But the definition of this section comes from taking the material we just covered and applying it to the case where instead of a system, a homogeneous system, we have a homogeneous vector equation. So just like, I mean, these are, these are three different ways of writing the same thing. So just like the system, always has the trivial solution. A homogeneous matrix equation always has the trivial solution. And the homogeneous vector equation always has the, homo um, the trivial solution. And for that last case, we can ask exactly the same question we just asked about systems of linear equations, which is, well, it has the trivial solution. Does it have non-trivial solutions? Does it have other solutions? And that question turns into the following definition. A collection of vectors v1, v2, up to vn are called linearly independent 
if the homogeneous vector equation x1 times v1 plus x2 times v2 plus plus xn times vn equals the zero vector has only the trivial solution. So linear independence is kind of the vector equation equivalent of not having free variables. It says, well, if you've got this homogeneous equation, this solution that you know you always have is the only solution that you've got. And as I say, I mean, this is a, a fundamental definition of linear algebra. It's much more important than it probably seems when you first look at it. I mean, looking ahead a little, or maybe looking ahead kind of a lot, um, if you think of vectors as a storing information, then saying that the vectors are independent is the same as saying that they're not, um, they're not storing redundant pieces of information. There's, you can't take two vectors and look at the information that's contained in them and then deduce all of the information that's contained in a third. So from a sort of information theory point of view, this says that all of your vectors are carrying useful and unique pieces of information. Um, for now, let me just make the observation that we decide whether vectors are, well, first let me, I'm not going to write this on the board because it's so natural, but if a set of vectors aren't independent, we call them dependent. You could probably have deduced that without my help, but just to have it out there explicitly. Um, to decide if vectors are dependent or independent, we use Gauss-Jordan elimination together with the material that we covered last week. Vector equations are the same as matrix equations, are the same as systems of linear equations. All of these are solved using Gauss-Jordan elimination. So, let's look at three vectors. And let's decide if they're dependent or independent. And the time will come where we'll probably just immediately set up a matrix and start working with it. But for now, we'll write down 
all of the steps. What we're asking is whether this vector equation What we're asking is if this vector equation has non-trivial solutions. If it has non-trivial solutions, these vectors are dependent. If it has only the trivial solution, then these vectors are independent. To solve a vector equation, we create the augmented matrix. That has these vectors as its columns. So grab my book where this example is written down and go to the calculator and enter this in. Let's see, raw, no, right size. I sort of default to working with these three, uh, with these vectors in R3, just because too much bigger and it's annoying to write it down, too much smaller and you don't see a lot of interesting stuff. So we're taking these vectors, And we are making them columns. Of the augmented matrix and then we quit out. Reduce row echelon form on this thing. And we see that uh, there is a free variable. So this has infinitely many solutions. So in particular, it has solutions other than the, the trivial solution. So, on Flutter this by erasing some stuff. And because there are non trivial solutions, this set of vectors is dependent. And um, we'll call we'll call it here. It's like ten minutes early, but that happens sometimes with these seventy-five minute classes. I think we should be on track to finish this section and the next section on Thursday. Uh, the reason I'm trying to cover, I mean, just in addition to time reasons. The reason I'm hoping to get these particular three sections done this week is that the third section doesn't have a homework assignment. So it won't, uh, won't add to your workload if we can get it covered.